Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy with his good friend, Suzanne Taylor King, the entrepreneur's secret weapon here for another weekly conversation. Uh, and our subject this week is harnessing social media like a pro and how it can work for you. Suzanne, welcome to the call. Hey, hey, how are hey, you? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. I was looking forward to sending out some knowledge to those that are able to view or hear us and and today it's about social media. And so harnessing social power, uh, social media like a pro is our subject for today. And social media has become such a big thing, obviously, in the last 10, 20 yeah. years. And I think that sometimes a lot of us would agree that's maybe the best or the worst thing that's ever happened uh, because there's a big negative side to it as well as a big positive. But But your initial thoughts to our topic for today. It can be so overwhelming that I I think... I think most people are doing it wrong if they're doing it for business purposes because there's so many platforms and so many like, do I need to be everywhere question I get so often. And the answer is totally no. Um, I know pairing back and being on less has actually helped me more. Yeah. And I think it's it's a great point, a great starting point because you think about the different platforms and mm-hmm. YouTube and Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, um, Snapchat, a few of the other ones, um, and and which ones are good for which types of things. I know I started out originally in YouTube years ago and finally became a partner this year, but it took a long, long time. But I think to your point, I think it's very important to figure out which platform works for you? And I'll give my input, but from your standpoint, how do you kind of see maybe the differences of one platform to the next? That might be helpful to people too, in terms of thinking mm-hmm. of which platform or platforms are work for them. Because I think to try to go across all six or seven is crazy, but maybe t- pick two or three. But how do you yeah. see each one a little bit differently from your experience? Well, I think it, it depends on who your ideal client is that you're trying to reach if it's if it's for business purposes, right? Um, and then to think of Pinterest and YouTube, um, your content for them, it's more like search engine content. Mm-hmm. You know, I tell people all the time, YouTube's great for content, but you have to think of your content as to what your ideal client would be searching for. And those search keywords, that's how you structure your content. Pinterest is the same way. It's a giant search engine. So I have one client who's on Pinterest. You, Your boards are set up with the problems that you solve. Mm. And then as people search. Um, and then Instagram is a younger you know, market, younger demographic than Facebook. Uh, LinkedIn is a more professional. So depending on who your ideal client is, if your ideal client's a a young mom, Instagram. If your client's a CEO mom, probably Instagram, LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. But she might not be active on LinkedIn. She's active for her personal on Instagram. So it all depends. And even though Facebook was kind of one of the pioneers Mm -hmm. has Facebook also kind of gone to a much older demographic as it's evolved. You know, everybody says that, (laughs) excuse me, everybody says that, but from what I see, everybody's still on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think really understanding your client too. I think of Facebook, they say, well, it's maybe your parents, social media thing and LinkedIn is certainly Mm -hmm. the business one. And it's, it's interesting, too, because you mentioned Pinterest, which I don't think a lot about. I don't post on Pinterest, but I certainly do YouTube and TikTok. We haven't mentioned that, which has become huge. And But I'll post on YouTube and TikTok and LinkedIn and X and Facebook are kind of the five that I use on mm-hmm. a pretty consistent basis. But it's interesting how LinkedIn in sort of in the business world, which is where you and I are very heavily involved, in some ways, doesn't really have any competition when you think about it, do they? No, no. Um, And, you know, Facebook groups, I would say are so popular, you know, with coaches, consultants, you know, people like us who are looking to put groups of people together, either free 
or, you know, a lot of the people I work with want to have a group coaching program or, or a paid membership group. And Facebook is still the first choice for that. Even, even though there's all these membership platforms like school and um, circle and discord and Slack and right all of those communication channel platforms. I use one uh, for years called heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it depends on what you're trying to achieve. Facebook is still, you know, Facebook groups are free. So you can convene a paying group of people in a spot where you can supply content and files and events to them in a very easy, completely free way. And I think too, as long as we're talking about the different types of platforms that are available, I think something that I, when I saw this harness social media, like a pro, I was thinking one of the things I want to talk about is maybe best practices, which is always mm. a good topic around anything. Oh, I, I have a little list. Oh, of, fantastic. Uh, please. Things. Yeah. Um, I think, I think once you decide on your platform based on you and your ideal client, then it's a matter of, you know, deciding a mix of content to put on that platform. Mm -hmm. So you and I both, we, we use this video to make smaller videos. Um, you and I both have events that we share and we post about, I have a podcast I share and I post about. And then in between that, I write content. So anything from a quote to something motivational to actual, you know, content, actual information that I give out to people in the post. So I think it's that blend of content that really works the best. And we've always heard the term content is king. I've heard that mm -hmm. for many, many years. And I think another C word that really uh, is part of that is consistency. And you mm -hmm. hear that a lot too. I mentioned to you earlier offline that I was doing my post Monday through Friday and think, well, that's kind of the work week and all that kind of thing. But then I really switched to seven days a week. And some of my biggest responses, number of views and, and likes and followers or whatever it might be, sometimes it's on Saturday and Sunday. So I realized that that's so important. And I think it, it's it's like that idea that people come to expect the same thing. They know that every day when they turn on the TV at yeah. six o'clock, they can get the nightly news or whatever. It's like, I know your podcast is going to come out. I know your video is going to be out there. And another thing that I think has really changed for me, and I'd love your content uh, comment rather on this, and that's the length of these videos. Mm. When, I, when I started with my Monday morning video years ago, and I've, I've been doing it for years, um, it was two to three minutes, three to four minutes. Then I chopped it to three, then to two, then to one. Now it's the Monday morning minute. And mm. the viewership went up every time I cut it down. And yeah. now some of these common videos I do on the the four platforms, TikTok, YouTube, uh, well, actually five, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, and X are 15 second videos. And it's amazing it's how much you can get out in 15 seconds. But don't you think that's a lot of that has to do with the shorter attention span? Oh, yeah, because there's so much content out there. Uh, apparently, you know, we're bombarded with between 50 and 60,000 pieces of information every day. So mm -hmm. just, you know, imagine going through the scroll, right? right. And you're scrolling. It has to be something to catch your attention so quickly mm -hmm. to get somebody to stop the scroll. Right. Right. Exactly. I think there's another piece that's interesting too, which I have not done as good a job at, which is different types of content. I'm so video oriented. Mm. Uh, that I forget that there's the, you mentioned your course podcast, but uh, articles and posts and pictures, mm. and Pinterest boards and things like this. But I would imagine like anything else, a variety of that is very helpful as well as just trying to stick with one mode like video. Yeah. And I try to do a mix of video written content, some written content. I, I just tested two posts, uh, written content with a picture uh, on LinkedIn to, to just to compare to last week's written content with no picture. Yeah. Um, very slight difference. And I, I think it's the mix because when you think about uh, human beings, they're, they're either 
audio, visual, or kinesthetic learners. Right. So by appealing to all three, you're going to hit more people with your content. Mm -hmm. So the person who watches David's videos might not be the person who reads your newsletter, which is just that video written out and transcribed. Right, exactly, exactly. And it's funny too, not only the, the variety of things, but uh, something, again, we, you and I talked about this earlier online. When I use YouTube, which is my earliest platform, I think it's said, I still can't believe it. I started my first video in 2007. I thought it was like 2015, wow. but God, 16, now 17 years ago. And wow. had one video, and I remember a friend saying, you should do a video about gratitude. And well, mm -hmm. how do you do that? And that was before the phones. And, wow. the phones and you know, I got a little camera is like, 50 bucks and is like a, about the size of a pack of cigarettes and put in and did my little video. Hi, I'm that gratitude guy or whatever. Probably wasn't even that then, but anyway, I think you should, I think you should make some clips from that video. Yeah, I, should, I need to, I can retro, I can retro David. It's just like, man, how did this guy get anywhere? I can't believe the lack of quality on this for gosh sakes. But, <laughs> but it was interesting is, is in doing it over time, I realized, so the goal of this is to get people to watch it. I mean, why do we do content if we don't get people to watch it? I mean, that's clearly the whole thing, which is why, and it, it's funny because back to social media, so uh, social commentary here, some of these people that, that are, are depressed and jump off bridges and things, they don't have enough followers or enough likes or enough subscribers. Mm -hmm. whatever. It's so sad, but like in YouTube, I remember when I just had a few subscribers and now it's, I don't know, three or 4,000, something like that, but you build it over time. And so that's what you want to do and you want to make your content better, but there's certain little things. And we're talking about uh, harnessing social media, like a pro. One of the things is, is the quality of the video itself. Of course, our cameras yeah. on phones are very, very high quality. So you can do that and you can do it on a zoom platform and use zoom as the recording, but your phones, and then your microphone is so important to get a good quality microphone. And, and I, the one on my MacBook pro is pretty good, but I also have a Yeti blue Yeti that I use when I really want to make sure it's, it's clear my presentations and so forth. And then of course the content itself, that what is it you're talking about? And then in YouTube, and in many cases, the thumbnails and, and what does a some thumbnail look like? And you take some time to make a good thumbnail and you mm -hmm. can do that on Canva thumbnail blaster. There's different places where you can do that. A couple of resources for you there. Another thing, and you and I talked about this earlier, that the title, sometimes you just get a screenshot. Yeah of Suzanne and David, you don't get anything else. Yeah. There's no thumbnail, there's no title, there's no anything or no uh, picture. It's just the title. And then one gets 50 views and the next one gets 2000 views. And you think, what is mm -hmm. this title? So another uh, pro tip here, there's a, a website called Headline Analyzer. Just oh, like I love that. And it's very helpful for the emotion, yeah. uh, the quality of the title. And you can put it through there and it'll give you a zero to a hundred score. And like on my talk, Neutralizing Obstacles Through Gratitude, uh, the the score is like eighty or ninety percent, something like that. You want yeah, that's how you know you're on the right track. And so it's so, but it really is the title. But those those are just some of the things. Uh, what are some other tips you think in terms of creating this social media that's going to make you like a pro would be helpful to the viewers? Well, first thing I would recommend is a list of things that I wrote down for today, um, and. You know, this is something that you need to think about or the things you need to think about before you're going to go out there to uh, attract people on social media. And I think the illusion I had when I came into the online space 15 years ago as a health coach, I was like, oh, I'm going to post on Facebook about my business and people are going to click and go to my website and pay me money. And Oh, did I have a lot to learn? Um, so, um, if I had to do it all over again, here are the things that I'd want to know first before creating that content: demographics and psychographics of your ideal client. So, do I even know if my ideal client is hanging out on Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram? I didn't. I had no idea. I just started posting everywhere. Um, what stage of the journey are your clients in? So as a health coach, I'll use that as an example. Are my clients uh, overweight and sitting on the sofa? Or are my clients already athletes 
that I want to work with to be even better, to cut for an event, to actually help with their endurance. Who, what stage of the journey person do I want to work with? And now I work with entrepreneurs, same exact thing. I had to decide where, um, what else have they tried besides your solution? So, you know, for your person on social media, looking to work with a coach to help them with their gratitude, to help them with their, I mean, it's really mindset that you work with. What have they tried before that hasn't worked? Where are they at in that journey? What obstacles do they have and have a list of them? What pain points do they have and have a list of them? What is it costing them financially to not embrace gratitude or not do better with their health? Make a list of that. Then knowing your own expertise, this is key. Knowing what your zone of genius is, because if you try to sell everything to everybody, nobody's going to listen. So knowing your own skills and expertise, and then knowing your package and container that you're, you're offering to people. I didn't have offers when I first started. I worked by the hour and I would do whatever that client needed, personal training, nutrition, fitness, didn't matter. It, you know, it was $65 an hour and you got all of this. But by not having a package to deliver, it was much harder to sell. Great points. Great points. And I think something as I listen to you go through those that is worth saying to me is this idea. If you're, again, we're talking about harnessing social media, making social media work for you and it can do so many. And yes, there's a lot of good things, a lot of bad things about social mm -hmm. media, but there's a lot, a lot of things that we can talk about that, that can get your message out there to a lot of people. Uh, pretty efficiently. And I think, but one of the things I would be remiss if I didn't remark on is get started. I just can't yeah. get over. I was, as you were saying that too, it made me think about a friend I had once that uh, the girlfriend or wife or whatever it was, was going to get a job. And like a year later, I said, well, did she get a job? And she goes, she's still working on her resume. I go, what, what, how long does it take to put a resume? Give me an hour. We can put it together. That's, with that's somebody who doesn't want a job. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Can you say we'll dig her? No, never mind. But anyway, but the thing is, is that it's just how, but get started, you know, and every journey starts with one step. And they say, and as somebody once said, I remember I've done several books and, and I, when I was doing the manuscripts and then doing the different things and the editing, to me, off topic, but to me, doing a book, the writing of the book is not that difficult, in my opinion, with word yeah. docs and spell check and all these different things. Actually, do the actual book. I'll tell you what's tough to me is the editing. Oh, my God. Did I just say that again? As I was telling the STK and then the next paragraph, as I was telling the STK, you just said that. You can't say that again. So uh -huh. you, just, you go through all that kind of thing. But the important thing was is to get it started, get it done, and get it out there. Oh, then later I found the typo, and I found a couple other things that I should have caught. But at least it was done. I'll make the next edition right. better. I'll catch those on the second and third and fourth edition. Right. So the same thing is true with social media. Get out there. You and I talked earlier about cringe, our earlier videos and earlier uh -huh. postings and things. We could probably put together a humor reel that would have people dying. Like, oh, oh let's man. do that. Let's do that. Maybe we should. And it's like, wow, I thought you were a professional. You, you say you're a professional speaker. This looks like a pretty amateurish effort you've made here. And so, yeah. but it's, but you just get better. And, and again, we talked about that offline. You just get better and you fine tune the process. So for those of you that are in doing it, make it better, get better content, improve your, all your equipment, your yeah. phone, your cameras, whatever it might be. And for those of you that are just getting started, start doing it. I mean, it's so funny with the cell phones. Who knew the cell phones? It was one thing to have a camera. Yeah. Another thing to have a video camera on it where you got everybody and I do walks and I take my camera and just, I'm walking along here talking about gratitude today. And mm -hmm. it's clear and it's, and it's the camera is good. The sound is good and everything. So get started and start today and put your first video out there and see what it does. And then just fine tune the process because it's just such an incredible way to reach people. When I first got started, I knew one of the things I did, we were talking about Facebook, which I think was one of the earlier, if not the earliest social media, I think they were first or close to it. And I would go into 
groups, you were talking about Facebook groups. I go to rotaries, Kiwanis, Lions, Chambers of Commerce, hospitals, prisons, schools, uh, veterans associations, all these places. I'd go into their Facebook page and I would post my little flyer about, yeah. I, would love, I would love to have you speak. I'd love to be a speaker for you. I'd yeah. like to take 30 minutes and talk about gratitude. And I was thinking that could have been envelopes and stamps and all these other archaic ways of doing things. And look how handy that was. And gosh, I got literally over the first few years, two to 300 talks I did at Rotaries just from posting in Facebook. So yes. another one of those examples of how powerful it can be. Yeah, I think it's all about awareness at this point. And then, you know, as you... I started to follow people who were doing a good job with it mm -hmm. right now. Nowadays in the space, you don't know who's doing a good job because everybody says they're making millions in their business, which is wonderful. So you, you, you really have to learn from the people who you can actually validate that they do know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I'll use LinkedIn as an example. That's my platform of choice currently. Um, I've been posting almost every day consistently for two years. I have 12,000 followers. Um, I get lots of engagement, lots of DM inquiries, which is wonderful, but I structure my content a little differently on that platform than I do on Facebook. Um, my Facebook posts will be more conversational and more personal and then my post on LinkedIn is more authoritative. It's typically shorter um, and a, a little bit of an uptick in the professionalness of the post. But I still always finish with that call to action, asking my reader or watcher or whatever they're doing on my post to either comment or share or message me or schedule a time. And you have to tell people what to do. And right. I see that mistake over and over and over again. You might not need to do it on every single post, mm -hmm. but if you're trying to sell something, uh, build awareness about your group or your offers, you have to tell people what to do. If you like this post, please share it. Mm -hmm. uh, if this resonates with you, comment below if it makes sense for us to talk about how this could work in your business send me a dm like it's not hard but you have to practice doing it and kind of know the structure of like what do i say when do i say it how do i make that ask i guess that's hard you, you just brought up a good point too and that is is like anything uh, I forget who it was said, uh, some motivational speaker once said, find somebody that's getting the results that you want to get and then do what they do. Yep. I get a kick out of it because people will say stuff like, I know what I'm doing, how to make videos or whatever. And I'll say, here's what you should do. And they go, well, my next door neighbor says that I should like, what, who is your next door neighbor? Who, who, who are they? Yeah. And I have yeah. an example of on, you mentioned LinkedIn is kind of your go-to platform. A good friend of mine named Sam in Great Britain. And like all of a sudden she's on LinkedIn every single day. So follow the people that are doing the kind of posting that you want to do and yeah. use it as your example. I mean, it's still funny how many people say, well, I see this person is getting results, but I'm going to do it my way because I seem to know what I'm doing. And mm -hmm. if you want to learn how to ride a bike, ask Lance Armstrong, you know, don't go ask some little kid down the road. So it, it's, you can learn yeah. so much from just being active on social media yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and, and follow the right people and follow, exactly. you know, um, I typically recommend to follow some influencers in mm -hmm. your space, to follow some peers in your space who are a little farther along or a little behind you, and then follow 10 potential clients. And yeah. you'll get a good sense of what the content is that they're talking about. Yeah. You know, if I notice my ideal clients are posting on social media and they're talking about, uh, let's just say YouTube. Oh, I'm growing my YouTube channel. Well, hmm, I've seen that a couple times. So it's just it's just good to keep up with your ideal person and their struggles and what they're working on. Even if you're never going to work with that person, 
it's still great information to keep up on. Yeah. And another thing that came up too, and we'll wrap up in about four or five minutes, but I think is something that I've, kind of, I wouldn't say learned the hard way, but kind of learned too is, is everybody talks about the algorithm and the word algorithm has probably been used more in the last 10 or 20 years, mm -hmm. than probably all of human existence or whenever the word first came it out. It used to be one of my favorite words, but yeah, it's gotten a little bit not so overused <laughs> some uh, yeah. too, too much too many times used, but, but, and that is, is when you do get started and that's going to be one of my tips wrapping up pretty soon is just get started. If you're not already started, listen to what Suzanne said. She had some great tips there, but also comment and like on so much of the content. And that's gets that engagement, which helps the algorithm and yeah. the more you're interacting with people and something that, that quite frankly, I've not done as good a job as I should. And I try to you know focus every day, YouTube, Facebook, whatever it might be, make comments on those, like and comment. And then not just, and I try to get away from this, just thanks for the comment, but a valuable comment that I like the way you said that gratitude has improved your life. I'm so glad it's been helpful to you. It sure has been to me or something like that. And in fact, it was funny on uh, AI, I was listening to a podcast earlier this morning. And of course, AI is just out of control, growing like a wildfire. And they actually have on YouTube now, you have an AI generated response for the comment. And it's it's oh, like, wow. and then just you press the button. And I liked your gratitude video. It was really interesting. And it helped me because I was having kind of a tough day. So you press the button and it goes, I'm so sorry you were having a great day. I'm having a bad day. I'm glad that I could be of service. And thank you for watching my videos. <laughs> Wow. So couldn't have, couldn't have said it better myself. So so STK uh, is your affectionately known, of course. Any final thoughts for people that are uh, trying to harness the social media, the, the social media power and like a pro? Well, I'll say what I said at a couple talks about social media, that treat it like you are at a party and some of the people you know and some of the people you don't know. And if there's somebody you want to talk to, go comment on their post. Right. Just like you would at a party. Oh, cool hat. Oh, cool shorts. Like, and start a conversation with people. It's not that hard. And we tend to make it much harder than it is. And as soon as I realized I could treat it like I would be in the real world, things started to open up for me. Excellent. Excellent. Well said. And, and as I said, too, it's just if you hear nothing else we say today, get started. If you're if you're started, listen to some of these tips and try to fine tune it and do a better job and better content and better uh, equipment or whatever it might be. More often frequency, consistency, content is king. Yes, consistency is so important. But maybe the most important thing, as I can say, is if you haven't done it, get started and, and pick yeah. those platforms. Suzanne mentioned LinkedIn. My, my go-to has always been YouTube, but I do the other ones as well. But pick a platform and think about that end result, that client that you want, that person that you're in your demo and psychographic that you want to deal with, and it'll be successful for you as well. So yeah. SDK, thank you as always. And thanks all of you for tuning in. And we will see you all next week. Take care.